All right. Hey, guys. I'm Stefan. Hi, from the uh, Freiburg University in Germany. It's a small university in East Germany. And I'd like to give you some brief insights into our add-on uh, Blender, an add-on used for, the genera uh, for generating synthetic data for deep learning. So not uh, for generating synthetic data by deep learning. And we want to create or use Blender for creating training data, label training data for supervised learning models for deep learning to train AI models, for example, for object detection. And uh, we do a, a lot of research in uh, the fields of robotics, for example, and uh, we want to teach uh, systems to understand their environment, to, uh, to understand their surroundings. And uh, of course, you can use cameras for this. This is classical uh, image understanding or image classification process and label images and pipe them into an AI model. But uh, it's common for robotics as well as for autonomous driving, for example, um, to use um, depth sensing. This is, uh, for example, a LiDAR sensor, a laser scanner, scanning your surroundings and giving you some uh, specific data structure, which is called a point cloud. It's like a, uh, you can understand it as a particle system, so um, like a set of points. Um, LiDAR is a laser-based system. We also have, for example, sonar systems working with ultrasonic waves um, used for, um, for water bodies, for example. And what we want to do is to take this data and um, to find certain object classes in these point clouds we receive from this depth sensing data. And the problem, um, as always, in AI is we have a lack of data. We need a lot of training data. So this is what we have, the, the pipeline here. We want to train these deep learning models um, with point cloud data, labeled point cloud data as input sets. We have beautiful 3D environments, hopefully, in Blender, um, our mesh representation of the real world. And what we want to do now is the virtual sensing. We want to uh, implement or use our add-on implement several depth sensing sensors, for example, LiDAR systems, create a lot of point clouds and use them as input data for our AI models. And therefore, um, my colleague Lorenzo and I have developed this add-on. It's called Blender. Um, you can find it on GitHub and try it on yourself. Uh, Blender um, was built for version 2.93 LTS, um, and we plan to uh, publish a new version for 3.3, but it's currently under development. Um, but you find a manual how to, uh, to download the add-on, how to implement it, and, and there are also some independencies, um, especially for the, for the output data, for the Python packages related to these output uh, formats. So Blender uh, contains uh, especially the virtual depth sensing, as you can see here with Susan. Uh, Suzanne, you have Suzanne on the left side with the plane, the mesh representation. In the middle, you can see a raw point cloud with a typical shadow. Um, as you can understand, if you do a, a ray casting or this laser uh, scanning, the, uh, all the, the area behind an object is not reachable. This is the reason for this uh, very, very characteristic shadow. And what we want to do is we add the labels to this data that you can distinguish between Suzanne and the plane, pipe this into the AI model and train to, to find this difference between these two objects or more. This is a very simple use case, of course. Um, several add-ons or several modules are implemented for Blender. Um, we start with the virtual environments. Of course, we need a 3D representation of everything. Uh, we want to measure virtually. This can then uh, can be done procedurally, for example, uh, as always um, usable for landscapes or for anything natural. We can use a semi-static representation, which means uh, we can alter our models and uh, make use of um, publicly available repositories, for example, ShapeNet, where we have a lot of different 3D objects, um, for example, for aircraft detection, which is also a use case here. And we can, of course, implement animations. Then we implement our sensors. We have some predefined sensors here, uh, famous LiDAR sensors like Velodyne, UltraPUC, or AlphaPUC. But you can also define your own sensor uh, by setting up a YAML file, piping it into the add-on, and then uh, yeah, get the characteristics of your real sensor. We implemented some error models. As always, it's, uh, there are some errors in real measurements. Um, the, uh, uh, for example, LiDAR is very sensitive to, uh, to rain, to dust, to f uh, snow and fog. And we implemented these effects as good as we could and uh, used the, the formulas we could find in the, in the literature. And we also implemented some kind of a random error measurement. Um, you just take a Gaussian error uh, distribution and add it to the models just to be 
closer to the, to the real measurement. You do the re uh, signal processing. This is done by uh, ray casting. You uh, emit your ray, look for an intersection with some geometry, and get the distance between emitter and the sensed object. Um, you can define the process of ray casting by using different materials, for example, to define the reflection or refraction effects. And you can also add a water sound profile, which is uh, important for the sonar system. Um, for sonar, for example, you have effects of salinity or for the depth of water, and you can set it up in your add-on here as well. Then you do the labeling. Um, we will take a look on this in the, in the following slides and in the examples. And also, uh, we can do an image annotation. Um, this is some kind additionally here. Um, as I've mentioned before, the focus is on depth sensing, but you can also uh, annotate rendered images with this add-on. And then you can export the depth sensing data to some uh, very famous formats, for example, LES, uh, CSV, or the binary HDF5 file. And this is why we have some uh, interdependencies with some other libraries here. Um, you are familiar with the process of ray casting, but just to show you uh, some failures we might have with depth sensing, especially LiDAR here, and when we have a mirroring object or some uh, reflectivity in our scene as well as refraction, and we might, have, uh, we might get a different representation of the environment in our point cloud data than we have in reality. As we just cast the ray, um, measure the time between the start and the end of the, of the measurement process, and then uh, receive the distance to the sensed object. But when we have the effect of, an, of a mirror or of a refraction, for example, by water or by glass, uh, we might sense a different object or a different uh, position of a point in the point cloud than we have in the, in the real world. These effects are, of course, implemented here due to the uh, implementation of the ray cast in Blender. The process is very simple. When you have your 3D objects, uh, for example, this chair, you can uh, use, for example, the custom properties um, to set up an ID for your object. Mm -hmm. um, when you do an object classification, um, as you can see here, um, we set up the category ID chair for the whole object, or you can define a specific material name to use this as in, an ID. This is uh, uh, your choice. What you can also do is uh, not to take the whole object as one class, but to take different parts of it to do it some kind of a part segmentation. This is also very famous for uh, po deep learning in point clouds. Then you can set up different parts of the object. As you can see here, the part ID for the plate and the leg um, doing here for the chair. And for example, um, I've mentioned the, the aircrafts before. It's uh, very important to distinguish between the, the aircraft wings and the aircraft body. This would be a, a specific use case here for, for part segmentation. And then here, a very simple example for this uh, three points, uh, for these three chairs. Um, we have these 3D objects. We have our virtual sensor. The virtual sensor is always attached to a camera in our system. We set up all our sensor specifications, all the parameters. We have set up the uh, different IDs to do the labeling process. And then in image B, we receive the raw point cloud data. This is what we would receive in reality. There's no classification. Uh, we cannot see different objects in here. It's just an unordered set of points of X, Y, and Z coordinates we have to attach to a different or link to a different object class. So now our add-on in image C uh, can use the labels we have defined before, um, attach the labels of the uh, different objects to the single points and pipe them into our output form and uh, in our output file or do the part segmentation in D use the different parts of the object use these IDs and uh, pipe them to into the output file and this is what we would give at the end to the uh, AI model to train on it to uh, to find uh, on a raw point cloud in B um, the differences as you can see here in image C and D so this is the creation process of training data for point cloud, uh, for the point cloud data structure. It comes freely with this add-on. It's just uh, additional content here. You can also do image annotations uh, using, of course, the rendering capabilities of Blender, which would be much better than uh, in the right image here. Um, but you can do it. You can uh, render your images, lose this, uh, use the same IDs, use the same uh, object categories, and then do a pixel-wise annotation or using bounding boxes, as you can see here, 
And this is saved, for example, by the Pascal VOC format, uh, a famous for format for image annotation. This is um, not the stuff we concentrate on in our research for the, for the robots, but uh, which is very famous for these image classification processes. And additionally to the annotated image, you get the, the depth image, uh, which is sometimes uh, important, for example, for uh, the sensing of RGBD cameras if you want to train models on, on these specific sensors. For sonar, it's quite different. Uh, sonar is for the water underground, often used in, in maritime robotics. Um, you can receive a 3D representation, again, with point clouds. This is also possible, but mostly you get some of these images, which are very, uh, yeah, w which look strange in the first place. But as you can see here, and this line in the middle from image A, this is the real image of a sonar scan, is some kind of your driving line of your boat. And then to the left and to the right of this uh, uh, side scan measurement, the first image is here is the lowest received uh, depth of the water body and the signals just go um, to both sides right and left from your boat and uh, detect the depth from this single emitting point here. And this is what we can also do here for this, 3D, uh, for this representation in Blender. And this is a very simple 3D scene of course, but it can, you can receive the same a type of data, also labeled again using these uh, different ID mo uh, IDs for the object classification and then for example train a sonar classifier which is uh, kind of rare but there are some deep learning models used for this. Okay, then let's just jump into some examples um, to give you an impression of the working process. The add-on itself is uh, attached to the end panel you can see here you have to set up your camera as your synthetic scanner. You have to set up if you want to use LiDAR, sonar, or time of flight cameras like the Kinect. Then you can use one of your presets, for example, Velodyne, the UltraPoke or AlphaPoke here. Set, uh, say if it's a static or rotating scanner. A static scanner is like we have in, in the iPhones and iPads today. It's like an array. Um, doing the ray cast, and when you have a rotating scanner, it moves. So you can, for example, get a 360 degree uh, measurement. The side scan is only important for, uh, for our sonar scanner here. You can set up the parameters. This uh, should be done by setting or by loading the presets of your, of your scanner, for example, setting up the uh, field of view and the resolution. You can add animations. You can alter your objects, for example, by using these repositories like ShapeNet and create a high uh, variety of, uh, of different uh, scanners instead of setting up a whole new 3D scene every time you want to scan. So you could just, for example, set up uh, your uh, source folder for 50 different aircraft models and they are changed automatically for every scan. So just to create this uh, high amount of data. Swapping uh, or random modification, this is done for uh, randomly rotate um, the objects to get some movement uh, in, the, in the scene. You can add the, the noise, um, the random noise on the one side and the uh, different meteorological effects like rain and dust on the other side. For example, um, simulated by a certain rainfall rate. And then you can set up and define your uh, desired output format, LES, HDF5 or CSV and of course set up your, your output location. And then it's done, I mean, this is a very simple example here at a, a small plane just to have a, a second object here. And what you need is you need a material for every single object um, just to process this um, uh, ray casting process with having the, the image, uh, the, the object ID. Um, you can set up the parameters of the reflectivity, for example, at the IDs and then do the scan you can see this is very quick. You receive a noise scan and a real scan if you added the noise scan here. Um, and you can pipe this data here into your AI model. This is what it looks like at the end. You have the, uh, this is the clean point cloud with, without any disturbances, without any noise. And um, just to show the example, the different measurement points for the plane as well as for the cube as two object classification problem. We can, of course, do it with high-poly models um, like this. This is a 3D model of our research mine in Freiberg and was created by 3D scanning and photogrammetry. And you can add your, and this model used textures. textures. Um, you can also, of course, uh, use the 
the color value and all the ways of the texture in your point cloud as well. So this is a, takes much more time if you have, the, the time increases with the number of polygons of your model, but in this point of uh, application, time is not really the important factor because it's just the creation of the data. Um, it's important at the end when you train the AI model, you want a real-time application, but for this it can, it can take up a little longer. I just uh, think this scan took up uh, like, I think 20 seconds, so it's, it's okay. The same thing here again for sonar. We have a water underground model again uh, created by, by photogrammetry. And this is a model with uh, 340,000 polygons. So it's not for a very big area, it's not that detailed, but it's enough for us to just get uh, some training data for the impression here and received some side scan data, which are quite difficult to this rotating LiDAR scanner we, we saw before. Okay, um, the thing about synthetic data is the, uh, every time the question how far do we get to the real world data and this is, uh, we try to check on this uh, with some evaluations as well as validations. For example, here by um, compar uh, comparing the depth images of a real Kinect and of our uh, time of flight camera in Blender. Um, we created the same scene in, the, in 3D as well as in reality just by stacking up some boxes, rotating them, uh, getting some different depth values here and compare these, um, these depth images in C and D. And uh, the results were very good. The, big, um, or most, uh, the biggest differences were in the vignette of, the, of this image uh, so in the surroundings which might uh, be linked to the, some errors in our camera, I don't know, but in the main part of our sensor, the results were very similar. We did the same with a point cloud measurement for a LiDAR scanner, again, in our 3D model of our research mine. Um, this is um, a photo in image A of the real mining gallery. This is the 3D model, and we used the part with very, uh, very less or with less arrows, um, as you can see here, uh, doing photogrammetry or doing 3D scanning, there are also some difficulties in creating the 3D model at the end. We want to get the, uh, some kind of a clean model, compare a real scan in the research mine with a virtual scan in this 3D model received by 3D scanning. And this is the part of the mine we compare to each other and uh, with cloud compare using uh, uh, some distance measure or cloud to cloud distance measurement metric um, to compare these two points out, point clouds to each other. A point cloud uh, comparison is quite difficult because uh, you can also use the same LiDAR scan on the same environment twice and you get uh, some differences in the point clouds as there are always some measurement errors. So also a comparison between a virtual scanner and a real world scanner is difficult. But to get a general impression about the differences and about the gaps between the the virtual sensing and the real sensing, um, it's quite a good start, starting point. And it, um, especially for this high resoluted uh, point cloud, it was uh, a very good and very uh, close uh, result we could achieve with this. Um, but um, the biggest point will be to train AI models with this virtual uh, sense data and then transfer them to the reality. And this is what we need to do in the future. And just to show some, some metrics here. Of course, the time, uh, computation time increases with the number of polygons as well as with the number of rays. If you set up your uh, a very high resolution uh, LiDAR sensor, of course, the computation time increases and also with the number of obje objects you have in your scene. If you have a very complex environment, we also had some virtual city environments, for example, um, the computation time is uh, quite high compared to this uh, simple example we, we could see. But again, time is not an important factor here. So what we could do with Blender, uh, we could create this data generator, especially for depth sensing data. Um, we could also validate it in very simple use cases, but what we have to do is train AI models using just these data, go into reality, and then uh, detect similar objects we had in our Blender 3D environment. Um, with just using these, these virtual sense data. And this is the, the big question here, how good will uh, uh, the model perform and uh, how good was our representation of the sensors in, in Blender. 
And that's about it. Uh, hope you get some impressions. If, feel free to use the, uh, the add-on. It's quite easy to install. And uh, if you have any questions, don't hesitate to ask. Thanks. Mm -hmm.